Miracles in the History of Modern Israel Why can we be sure that Israel is still the chosen people? The very fact of the supernatural existence of the still secular state of Israel, the fact that Israel miraculously emerged from the ashes of the Holocaust and miraculously gathered in large numbers in its historical homeland, which has never happened to any other nation in history, proves the biblical fact that the gifts and calling of Israel are irrevocable. Israel still has the responsibility to be a light to the nations, which is the essence of its God-given calling that continues to this day. In the book of Isaiah, we read that God created Israel to proclaim His praise, Isaiah 43 verse 12. And that is what Israel has done. We don't always think about that, but for centuries Jerusalem has been the only place on earth where God was honored. The rest of the world was living in ignorance and darkness. But in Israel the book of Psalms was written, in the temple God's presence was tangible, and there the priestly choirs sang to praise God. And I think to myself, imagine if the Jewish people had stopped doing that. Would our world still exist today? Yes, it is sometimes not easy to understand how it is that those who have not accepted their Messiah can still be considered an elect people, not to be confused with salvation, but this is exactly what Apostle Paul writes, as far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake, but as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Romans 11 verses 28 and 29 Paul explains the enduring election of the Jews by the fact that the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable, that is, not able to be changed or reversed. Obviously it is this verse and truth that explains the facts of such incredible success of many Jews in various areas, which even anti-Semites seem to be well aware of. For example, in percentage terms, there seem to be more Nobel Prize winners among Jews than relatively among any other people. The Nobel Prize was destined to become the most prestigious prize of the 20th century. Among the laureates of this prize, approximately 20% are Jews, citizens of various countries. As of 2018, there were more than 907 Nobel laureates, of whom 213, about 22% to 23%, were Jews. There are especially many Jewish laureates in physiology and medicine. The proof of the apparent irrevocable election of the Jews is of course also a fact of God's often phenomenal supernatural protection of the state of Israel in different times, especially in times of decisive wars with their Arab neighbors, the appearances of angels on the front lines, protection of cities during all three of its major defensive wars against the Arabs who had first British, then Soviet armament and support. All these not only prove, but demonstrate the immutability of God's promises and calling to Israel and the fact that the gifts and callings of God are immutable, not able to be changed or reversed. The video posted by Israel News Online, shows what appears to be an enormous pillar of cloud, dust and rain hovering over the dangerous border between Israel and Syria, in the very same area where ISIS militants had attacked IDF forces for the first time four days earlier. ISIS has been eyeing the northern border of Israel and have claimed that they will establish a caliphate in the Levant, including taking over the state of Israel. Amidst increasing ISIS activity on the Syrian side of the Golan Heights, Israeli soldiers stationed there were in awe as they reported that over the weekend a literal pillar of cloud descended from the sky on the border between ISIS and Israel. The bizarre storm completely engulfed the Syrian side of the border, 
but stopped just at the boundary and did not enter Israel. No one would believe it if it were not on camera. A number of soldiers are seen in the following video capturing the phenomenon on their cell phones. The video went viral on Facebook, where the Israelis labeled the storm as divine intervention. Huge miracle! Notice how God stopped this enormous storm exactly on the border, wrote Yafat Romano. Thank you, Father. During the 1973 Yom Kippur War, a war that Israel could not have won in any way had it not been for God, one of the miracles reported by tank commander David Yanev occurred. A group of Israelis were trapped in a mined area, surrounded by Syrian tanks, and were able to survive and get to safety only thanks to a sudden powerful storm that blew out 30 inches of the ground under which the heavy mines were buried and made all the mines visible. What happened during the wars for the preservation of Israel especially 1948, 1967, and 1973 is unique supernatural and recognized even by some Pentagon experts as a clear miracle. Especially the miracles of the Six-Day War and the capture of Jerusalem. God clearly protected and fought for Israel, albeit secular and sinful for the time being, thus showing his paternal attitude toward Israel as to a prodigal son, whose return to the Messiah and the Father is called for by the true Church of the Nations. Nothing like this has happened to any other nation in history. The ancient nations, who were contemporaries of ancient Israel have simply disappeared, but Israel is alive and so often in the world news feed. And the commandment to pray for the peace and salvation of Jerusalem and Israel has not been abolished. And also the calling of Christians to stir up in them zeal for God, as Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 11 verse 11 again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. The three wars in which Israel miraculously not only survived, but even increased in territory, are, first, the War of Independence of 1948, when, after the announcement of the results of the UN vote in favor of the division of mandatory Palestine into two states Arab and Jewish, the Arab nations proclaimed mourning in connection with the birth of Israel and amicably in one accord rushed to destroy the young Jewish state. Syrian, Egyptian, Iraqi, Lebanese and Jordanian troops armed with British weapons invaded Israel. The war ended in July 1949 with the defeat of the Arab countries and the expansion of Israel's borders beyond the original official UN boundaries. As we know from maps of the time, the UN gave Israel three pieces of land connected by small checkpoints. It was physically impossible to defend a state with those borders. The Jews of Israel knew this very well but nevertheless agreed to accept such a modest gift from the League of Nations, realizing that they would certainly be attacked, and the borders would be determined by the results of the war for survival. On the night of May 15, the armies of five Arab countries, Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, and Lebanon, as well as seconded units from Saudi Arabia, Algeria, and several other states, invaded Palestine. The spiritual leader of the Muslims of Palestine, Amin al-Husseini, who had been in league with Hitler all through World War II, admonished his followers, I declare a holy war. Kill the Jews. Kill them all. Ein Brera, no choice, was how the Israelis explained their willingness to fight even in the most unfavorable circumstances. Indeed, the Jews had no choice, the Arabs did not want concessions from them, they wanted to exterminate them all, in effect declaring a second holocaust. Some time later, after Israel did not go the way of the USSR policy, as Stalin, who helped Israel at its very beginning, had hoped, 
but turned towards relations with the USA. The Soviet Union did its best to arm Israel's enemies, but all was in vain. The USSR fell into oblivion, but Israel remained, just as the Christian Church in the USSR, against which the same USSR waged war, remained alive. I have read documentary publications of how in the last century the USSR leader Brezhnev angrily denounced and scolded Arab leaders for losing to Israel all the time, even though the USSR constantly provided them with superiority in weapons of all kinds. During the 1973 Judgment Day War, Soviet air defense specialists literally fought against Israel on the Egyptian side, firing at Israeli planes. Yes, the history of modern Israel, as well as the history of biblical Israel, is full of paradoxes and inexplicable, from a rational point of view, the greatest miracles and unprecedented events in history. During the Persian Gulf War, 39 huge Iraqi Scud missiles fell on the territory of Israel only one person died, and even then, of a broken heart. When the same Scud missile was launched at American soldiers, there were 300 dead. Miracles happened in Israel at every turn. In 1967, the huge regional state of Egypt attacks tiny Israel. After only six days, the Israelis capture the Sinai Peninsula, after which Israel enters Egypt itself. A miracle happened. It is only European and American pressure that was able to force Israel into a truce. As a result, more than 5,000 Egyptian soldiers, among them generals, officers, pilots, soldiers of special units, found themselves in Israeli captivity. And how many Israelis were taken captive by the Egyptians? Only five. How can this be? As it was predicted in the Bible, in the Torah, one drives out a thousand, and two drive out ten thousand. An Egyptian, wanting to do a favor for an Israeli tourist, told him a story about how he himself had personally fought against his people during Operation Kadesh in the desert. When the Egyptians went on the attack, there were very many of them and few Jews. An Egyptian recounted, suddenly, out of nowhere, some dust fell from the sky, and all the Egyptians fell dead. I was the only one of our company left alive. How can that be? There is a story in the Bible, there is a similar incident where one angel of God wiped out over 100,000 Assyrians overnight who had surrounded Jerusalem and were mocking the God of Israel. The story is told in the book of the prophet Isaiah and in two other books of the Old Testament. I will defend this city and save it, for my sake and for the sake of David my servant, said God. Then the angel of the Lord went out and put to death a hundred and eighty-five thousand in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. Thirty-seven so Sennacherib king of Assyria broke camp and withdrew. Isaiah 37. Israeli Colonel Yuri Ben Ari, in his memoirs, recalls how, without any communication with their command, they marched a few kilometers from the Suez Canal. The Egyptians fled, unbeknownst to them, leaving even their boots on the ground. The Six Day War, the entire Arab world against tiny Israel. Cartoons of the time depicted eight Arab countries ready to wipe Israel off the map. The military rabbinate calls for the urgent cutting down of Sharon's orange groves and the preparation of 50,000 graves for future IDF casualties. Together with him, the entire country freezes in great fear. Egyptian President Nasser and with him the rest of the Arab leaders are competing with each other on what they will turn the Israel they are about to defeat into. The Lebanese newspaper Al Jazeera printed a cartoon of an Israeli in a bathing suit standing near a swimming bridge under the muzzles of eight indestructible Arab powers, 
and the Israeli has no choice but to jump into the sea to drown. The newspaper claimed that there is nothing left for you, Jews. The Arab armies are practicing hard in anticipation of your total annihilation. The rest of the world was calmly watching the impending catastrophe. On June 6, 1967, Israel is surrounded on all sides. War begins. Israel is attacked by Egypt, Jordan, with Iraqi and Saudi combat troops, as well as volunteers from Libya, Morocco, and Palestinian terrorists. Israel suddenly strikes Arab airfields and destroys 450 enemy airplanes in just two hours. In two hours it destroys virtually the entire Arab air warfare fleet. In just six days, all Arab armies are defeated, and Israel, instead of jumping into the sea, occupies its ancient biblical Jewish territories promised to them by God over 2,000 years ago. And most importantly, it occupies completely its most ancient capital, Jerusalem, and the holiest place for Jews, the Temple Mount with the Wailing Wall. I don't know what other story could better inspire people to believe in the God of the Bible, who is faithful to his promises. During the War of Independence, a small detachment of Israelis were defending their positions, their ammunition was running out, there seemed to be nothing to wait for but death. The Arab soldiers were about to make one last decisive attack, when suddenly, looking up at the sky, they shouted in fear and panic, Abu Ibrahim! Abu Ibrahim! and rushed away. The surviving Jews never realized what the Arab soldiers had seen that made them refuse to take them all with their bare hands. Years later, veterans of these events from both sides surprisingly met, and then an Arab veteran in a peaceful atmosphere told his Jewish colleague, who was then among the Jewish defense, that on that day during the assault they, the Arabs, all saw a vision of the Prophet Ibrahim, that is, Abraham who part-time, as it is known, is the patriarch or ancestor of the entire Jewish people, and to whom God solemnly promised that those who bless you will be blessed and those who curse you will be cursed. Genesis chapter 12. Thus, through this meeting, the Jewish veteran learned what saved his unit from imminent destruction. The 1973 Doomsday or Jom Keeper War was the third of the most dangerous and large-scale wars. This war was particularly horrific because, in the euphoria of their great victory in the Six-Day War of 1967, the Israelis did not expect such a sudden attack by Arab military formations re-equipped with Soviet tanks, weapons and equipment and even on their most solemn or awe-inspiring day, the biblical holiday of Yom Kippur, the Day of Judgment, when almost all Jews go to synagogues to pray and fast. Israel suffered great losses in the beginning and bled, but still, with God's apparent help, won the war. Avigdor Kahalani, an Israeli tanker, said that Syrian tanks came very close to the crossing of the Jordan River, to the Sisters of Jacob Bridge, but suddenly stopped. The Syrian tanks were free to move inland, which was open to them. In the Syrian troops' location, the Israelis later found a large amount of civilian clothing. The Syrians told their soldiers, take your girlfriends with you, you will soon be walking with them on the promenades of Haifa and Tel Aviv. Avigdor Kohalani admits that he was there at the strategic crossing with only three Israeli tanks and alone stopped 150 enemy tanks, which for some unknown reason suddenly took off and stopped right in the middle of the battle. Later, it was he who was given the title of Hero of Israel. But if we take into account other testimonies, including those of fugitive Syrian tankers, it is well understood who the hero-in-chief of this and similar unusual battles is. How could it also be that the Syrians in that terrible doomsday war stopped at the very line of Tillam, on the Golan Heights? 
The answer is given by an Israeli intelligence commander who interrogated the commander of the Syrian 9th Armored Division, who fought with the Jews in the Golan. When asked by an Israeli intelligence officer what was the reason for stopping the offensive at the Tillam Line in the Golan, the Syrian commander replied, I'd like to see you cross that line when there are angels in white robes lined up against you, and a white hand from heaven orders you, stop. So I stopped. This is an excerpt from an interrogation report. The Israeli tankers, who saw dozens of Syrian tanks stop in front of them as if in fear of them, could not understand the reason for this inexplicable stoppage. The reason was God's miracle, the miracle of his ancient love and faithfulness to his covenant and his many biblical prophetic promises to the people of Abraham and also the miracle of his love for all of us, regardless of nationality, so that we could know that such a living and loving God of the Bible can be boldly and completely trusted with our lives, and followed, contrary to any public opinion. When an Israeli commander of a parachute division asked the Pentagon military theorist to comment on the course of the Six-Day War, and explain how in two days the Israelis managed to occupy Shechem and Hebron, the cradle of ancient biblical Israel, after which the famous phrase was uttered, the Temple Mount is in our hands, the Pentagon specialist refused to comment, saying that there is nothing to say to military science, this is an unusual war, it is a miracle, and a miracle contradicts all logic. The last Lebanon war in 2007, thousands of rockets rained down on Israel and hit homes. Miracles, whole neighborhoods hearing explosions, people coming out into the street, and as one witness from Carmel said, the only house that was hit was a house that no one was in at the time of the explosion. And this is in a populated residential neighborhood. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like, comment and until next videos.